Uh, I'm Dr. Ravi Kohli, the current president of API, and I thank you all for being here today, uh, early in the morning, uh, from especially in the West Coast, to join this very important uh, webinar on physician burnout, which is one of the theme of the year, uh, being a psychiatrist and a physician uh, um, organization that we are working on uh, this issue this year. And uh, uh, my good friend, Dr. Divya Navani is going to talk about uh, her approach and her suggestions and her guidance on this issue. And I'll uh, give the podium to Dr. Sini Gangasani, our uh, current CME chair, who has done a tremendous job throughout the year. I especially want to thank him for his services to API as a CME chair. And uh, please uh, take over uh, uh, Sini for the rest of the next hour. I'm here in Philadelphia today to work on the API convention, uh, 41st convention. Please join us. I will share some information at the end of the webinar as well. Thank you and go ahead, Sini. Yeah, thank you, Ravi. Thank you for this uh, great opportunity. I enjoyed being a CME chair for whole year. We have one more CME left for the year in June. It's going to be on June 10th, uh, sorry, June 18th, uh, next CME by Dr. Surender Narvetla about uh, pathways from hypertension to heart disease with focus on prevention. Um, but today, I think uh, this, this is a very important topic. As we all know, I think uh, burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion that comes from excessive and prolonged stress. It can happen in anybody, any speciality, any career. I think all of us, we need to take care of ourselves so that we can provide a highest quality of care to our patients and we have a fulfilling career in medicine. With that in mind, I think uh, with a, a psychiatrist as the president, uh, Ravi, I think we have so many distinguished uh, the, the psychiatrists in our faculty all over the United States from Indian diaspora. I think uh, we needed to get to learn from our uh, the people as a board member, I've seen multiple times in Georgia Medical Board to have the people getting into burnout situation and getting into more other addictions and getting into trouble than losing their licenses. So I think uh, it's good to for us to take care of this. I think uh, we have uh, so much, such a good speakers in line. I think uh, Divya is a, a great speaker and she has uh, innovative revolutionary ideas to let us know how we can take care of ourselves. Uh, I think it's my pleasure to introduce our esteemed moderator for this session, the psychiatrist from Huntsville and um, board of, past board of trustee, Tarek, Tarek uh, Wasawada. He's a distinguished fellow of the American Psychiatric Association and is also president elect for Indian American Psychiatric Association. And he's also well known for his creativity of the website for healthcare workers' well being and happiness and publishes a monthly newsletter. Please visit his website at happymind.md to learn. I get a, every month one of those uh, emails and I learn a lot from Tarak. I think, uh, please join me giving a warm welcome to our uh, moderator Tarak and speaker Divya and uh, thanking them for sharing their expertise with us today. Thank you, uh, Tarak, for doing this and please take over for the moderation. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, Srini, for the nice introduction. And Ravi, you've been a champion for mental health and thank you for running the RP in a very nice manner and you run it like a psychiatrist would run a group therapy session. Um, so we are here today talking about physicians burnout and it's a concept that we didn't know much about it. Um, if you had uh, your family members or your parents as a physician probably they went through but you didn't realize that burnout is a term that has been used mostly for the machines and when a human becomes a machine, that's when the burnout happens. So burnout um, is like Srini says, it can happen to anybody. We all, when we look at the data, we all kind of smile at each other. Oh, it's more in psychiatry, it's more in emergency medicine. It's more in uh, critical care. Don't think that way, it can affect you too. And I think uh, Dr. Navani is bringing a good approach about is burnout related to institution? Is it burnout related to our training? Is it burnout related to ourselves? And she's gonna give us an idea about where does the burnout come from? Because if you don't take care of yourself, like we do for our lawn, the weeds will grow. So you should have a stronger lawn, the roots should be stronger. And if you don't do that, a lot of bad things can happen, same way for our life. So I will give podium to Dr. Navani and she will take it over from here. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to our program. I'm going to talk to you about physician burnout today. 
if you would just take a minute and share in the chat where you're calling, where you're joining from, what is the medicine you practice, what is the thing that is stressing you most today? And what do you hope to learn today? So if you could just go ahead and start uh, typing in the chat, I will come back and look at some of these later or um, at the time of questions. Please go ahead. So good morning. I am going to start out by talking about what is burnout, how it is measured, how it affects the healthcare system, how it affects physicians, what are the current approaches to burnout, what do I think is missing in the picture, and I will present to you my revolutionary solution to burnout. I'll talk a little bit about coaching versus therapy, because that is, that is a question we all, we all think about. What is the difference? We'll do a fun exercise. And I will leave you with something to think about and something that you can practice right away in your life if you're stuck in any situation. I'll then kind of put it all together and, and really think, what is the real problem? Brainstorm and come up with what is the real problem? And you will have a chance to ask questions at the end. So shall we get started? Ready? I hope this slideshow works. I'm, okay, I press enter. How is this going to? Oh, yeah. yeah. How do I go back now? Just a uh, back arrow? Yes, yeah. yes. That's good. So through my journey as a practicing physician, I have always been struck by how much impact we have on our patients, how much they look up to us and how much we are able to help them. As I was going through burnout, I realized that if I don't feel completely well, I don't offer everything that I have to offer. So my mission and my calling through my own journey through burnout is to share with all of you all the resources, all the knowledge, all the insights that I gathered, all the practices that I learned that helped me move out of burnout. so that any physician who is struggling out there can find me and can find their way out of burnout. My mission is to support every physician in consistently performing at their best, harnessing the power of transformative care to change lives and to create a better world. What is burnout? Burnout is a term that was described and studied by Dr. Christina Maslach in the late 70s and the early 80s. Burnout is thought to be an occupational syndrome that happens because of unavoidable stress at work. So when we are stressed, what happens? We become exhausted, emotionally exhausted and energetically exhausted exhausted. So this is a depletion that we feel due to the chronic stress and high demands of our profession. We have all experienced that. This then leads to depersonalization. So what is depersonalization? Depersonalization in simple terms is a numbness that we develop. It is a distance from our patients, from our life, that lives that we develop. So it's a detached and cynical attitude towards one's work and patients. There is a, a sense of a negativity there. There's a sense of a hopelessness there. This then leads to reduced personal accomplishment, decreased efficacy, and we don't perform better. Now I'm talking about these things leading one to the other. They are also thought to occur independently of each other. 
But I want to just make this, make this pattern, make you all aware of this pattern where you become exhausted, leads to, I mean, this is self-defense mechanism. You're going to, to protect yourself. There's some kind of depersonalization that's going to happen. And then that ultimately leads to decreased efficacy. So this is burnout. I'm, I have also referenced an article from AMA uh, in February of 2023 that describes physician burnout. There are various measures of burnout. Maslach burnout inventory has been the gold standard for decades. There are some other measures as well. Mini Z, Mayo Wellbeing Index, Index, Stanford Professional Wellness Survey. Uh, through the COVID epidemic, Dr. Christina Maslach and uh, Professor Michael Letter published an article in Howard Business Review on how to measure burnout accurately and ethically. So here they have talked about good practices about measuring and defining burnout. They have also talked about how the MBI is being used. It is also being used in ways it was never intended to be used. And there is just a lot of, lot of confusion around the entire, entire process of burnout as well as of, um, of how to measure it, defining it, measuring it. We all know that burnout is there and it has, it has everybody's attention. And why? Why is the healthcare system, the hospitals, the organizations, why are they so concerned about burnout? The reason is financial. The reason is reduced patient satisfaction, low quality care, malpractice claims, physician turnover, vacant positions, early retirement, shortage of physicians. It is estimated that an additional $4.6 billion per year is spent by healthcare organizations because of physician burnout. Mind you, this is every year. On top of that, about $1 billion is spent because of physician turnover. And it is thought that about a third of the physician turnover is due to burnout. Now this 5 billion does not include all the other factors, reduced patient satisfaction, low quality care, increased morbidity and mortality. So this is something that everybody rightfully is very concerned about. But how does it affect you as a human being? How does it affect physicians? If you really take a minute to pause, if you're going to have low energy, if you're going to have, be emotionally depleted, if you're going to be numb, if you're going to have a sense of depersonalization and uh, mental distance, and if you're going to not be feeling that you're accomplishing anything and you're not going to be efficient, what is that going to affect? Everything, right? Health, relationships, career, everything. So how does unrelenting stress affect your health? If you could share in the screen, in the chat box, I think people are not not sharing too much, please. I mean, I, I would love for you to share. How do you think health affects, how do you think uh, stress affects health? I'm going to start here. High blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, heart attack, addictions. What else? Yeah, uh, we, did, we are trying to enable the chat box. There was oh, a little bit of a glitch. Okay. Yeah, okay we'll, I was we'll wondering, go. I thought, Okay. Yeah, and it's nothing. Okay. So yeah. you guys are listening. That is. Yeah, we are listening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, let me answer myself. Yeah. Uh, burnout and stress cause. Um, uh, I think some of it is self-induced that we are all perfectionistic and uh, sometimes yes. we don't take care of ourselves and we don't prioritize our family, ourselves, our health, our well-being. So we kind of 
tend to bring it on ourselves to some extent. That's one of the occupational hazard. And uh, um, my, yeah, obviously, if you shut down, you kind of close off from other people. You're not as open to people. You feel like um, uh, you're a victim almost, and a uh, sense of uh, alienation comes in. You almost close your doors, uh, literally and physically, of your office, and you're not open to people. So those things happen, and um, you lose your uh, ideal self, you know, and you become a kind of a machine. That's one exactly. thing that we all have. It happens. Uh, so we need exactly. to constantly be uh, vigilant about that thing creeping in. So we don't like to admit that it is happening, but it does happen to all of us. It's a uh, it's a matter of degree, or how much it's affecting, how self-aware you are, and what exactly. kind of corrective actions you're taking. So, exactly. We yeah. are all yeah, we yeah. are all prone to it. We are all <clears throat> either experiencing burnout or at risk of it, most of us. So how stress affects our health? I think I've added all those things. I'd like to just add cancer, early death, disability, chronic illness, every aspect of health. And we haven't even started talking about the other aspects of health. I'm just talking about physical health. So mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, energetic health. It affects everything. How does stress affect our relationships? The negativity, the bitterness, the anger, the resentment, they bleed into all our interactions. We become anxious, fearful, suspicious, vigilant. This destroys all our relationships, right? Person, profession, as a colleague, as a doctor, as a patient, as a, as a parent, as a spouse. And then how does stress affect your career? Sour personal relationships, no growth, malpractice, not realizing your potential, no legacy. So this is just a vicious cycle of stress, affecting health, affecting relationships, affecting career, just gaining speed and momentum. So what have you worked so hard all your life for? And what are you working so hard for? Yeah, to kind of chime in, uh, it, uh, it, there are studies done about how the stress affects the burnout affects our own clinical performance. And uh, we all think uh, we are immune from it and uh, we can practice, we can compartmentalize our lives and practice medicine without being affected by stress, but it's not true. And uh, we need to be aware of that. There are studies done, people who are uh, physically or emotionally burned out are more likely to have implicit bias in their own practice of uh, medicine. So our biases kind of take a uh, kind of a override our instincts to be compassionate and everything. So, so we revert to some or one of our worst selves in in a state of stress. So we need exactly. to be aware. Yeah. So yeah. Not, not only it affects everything else, but it's uh, actually a, makes a bad person to begin with. <laughs> so it's a, we have to be very careful about burnout and how to... And so what Dr. Kohli is referring to is when we are stressed, we don't think clearly. We, we are not clear-minded. We don't think logically, rationally. Uh, the current approach to burnout. I have referenced an AMA article here, Joy in Medicine. Uh, the reason I referenced this article is because this, this seems to be very emblematic representative of the current approach to burnout. Dr. Christine Sinsky, VP of Professional Satisfaction at AMA has said, and I'm going to read her quote here, while burnout manifests in individuals, it originates in systems. Burnout is not the result of a deficiency in resiliency among physicians, rather it is due to the systems in which physicians operate. Agreed, agreed and agreed. Thank God we are not being blamed for our burnout. But we're still not any closer to finding a solution, are we? So decades of research, billions of dollars lost, billions of dollars spent, and still the problem is unrelenting, ever increasing, 
and on the rise. What is being done for us from the outside? Hospitals are committing to monitor and assess physician burnout. Well-being committees have been established. I think most of us today work in hospitals where there are well-being committees. Time spent on EHR and for other practice efficiencies is being monitored. Leadership development is being promoted. Teamwork metrics are being measured and peer support programs are being established. Now, all this is a very comprehensive approach, but this is an outside in approach and it is not reaching us. So why is it not reaching physicians? Why is it despite so much effort being put into this, we, we are not getting better, we are not feeling better, we are not handling stress better. So I want to introduce to you my revolutionary approach for beating burnout. I went through my own journey of burnout. I'm going to share my story here. About 15 years ago, I was in a grip of uncertainty, fear, panic, and near terror. Everything looked fantastic on the outside, yet nothing was right on the inside. I was functioning, highly functioning, as a member of society, as a physician, but inside, I felt deeply confused and lost. I thought this feeling of constant dread, fear, and uncertainty would suddenly take me down. I thought it would never end. I felt at the whim of everyone and everything outside of me. I felt helpless and out of control. I tried everything. Prayer, fasting, reading scriptures, chanting. I have been a deeply spiritual person my whole life. I had the chanting down pat, Gayatri Mantra. I was raised in the Arya Samaj tradition. I had scriptures by my side. I have been reading the Bhagavad Gita since I was 15 years old. On the 1st of January every year, I read the entire Bhagavad Gita for many years. What I realized was this. Everything helped a little, especially while the going was good. Everything helped while I was doing it, and maybe for some time after. But the minute the slightest whiff of a crisis hit me, a possibility that something I had not expected, a health crisis or any other crisis, the floor fell out from under my feet every single time. I was fearful, full of terror, unable to function, as lost and confused as ever. I thought I would go crazy. I could not go on for one moment. And yet on the outside, no one could have guessed that. I started looking for answers. I read thousands of books. I, I'm not kidding, thousands. Sometimes I would read five books a, year, uh, a week. I would, I would read at uh, red lights, red light stops in between picking up my children. I would read in the school line. I read everything that said medicine or health at the end. Of it. A few years after that, I started attending courses. I attended any number of courses. I sat for hours in front of people who I thought would teach me something. And this is what I realized. I realized that no amount of thinking, planning, strategizing, chanting, praying, visiting temples was going to bring me lasting inner peace and joy. I yearned for peace of mind, for stability, for an unshakable inner strength, a foundation of courage and resilience to live my life to face all, all challenges and to know that I would be standing no matter what. I yearned to be an effective and productive adult woman leading a life of purpose, connected to my calling and living the life of my dreams. 
that is when I started my journey with them. I stopped trying to change anything outside of me. What I learned was I have an infinite source of love, safety, and belonging inside of me. And I could live a life sourced from my deep inner knowing and guidance. I could be effortlessly joyful and grateful instead of telling myself that I was joyful or grateful or telling myself that I should be joyful or grateful. There were many steps and many stops on the way. But today I stand at the threshold of the completion of that transformation with a deep connection to myself, my life, higher power with others and the larger world. My purpose for coming into this life is crystal clear to me and the path forward is shining bright and clear. So while our true inner nature and our higher nature and the transformation within us is always happening. Today, I feel that I'm at a point that I can share something of value with you. I can share my process and it will transform your life. I am absolutely certain that if you can do it, if, if I can do it, you can do it too. So this is my program. My system works from the inside out. It builds physicians from the inside so they can make use of all the resources that are being offered to them. And they can become a part of the solution instead of being a part of the problem. Why does it work? Because when you feel healthy and better on the inside, you can make use of everything that is being offered to you. Pretty simple. What is my three-step system of transformation and how do I do this? So what I realized that there are three key areas of a physician's life that are disrupted, disrupted as we practice medicine. It's almost inevitable. Sleep is something that goes first. That starts in medical school. On call, long and late work, working hours, and then comes the stress. We lead a stressful life. We are surrounded by sick and unhappy patients, making life and death deci uh, decisions, constant vigilance, threat of malpractice. We bring the stress home. We lay awake at night, worrying about the decisions we have made during the day. And then the disruption in relationships. Exhausted at work and at home, no time for family, putting on a brave face, white knuckling through life, feeling lonely, isolated, and misunderstood. This is our personal vicious cycle of burnout. This is what we experience inevitably, each and every one of us. In my program, I help you connect the dots and understand how what you are experiencing in one area of your life is connected to the other area of your life and actually connected to all areas of your life and how making a change in one area is going to cause a ripple effect and change everything. So no matter where you are stuck, whether it is a personal area or a professional area, you are at risk of being burned out, of experiencing burnout at some point, and you cannot perform at your best. I will not talk at you or give you another lecture. This is not theory. This is the practical. I will actually show you how everything is connected, how it is affecting you, what is the change that you need to make? And I will watch over you while you practice making that change. Most physicians I know are not going to be satisfied unless they are giving at their highest potential, unless they leave a legacy that changes their world and makes the world a better place. So what is the difference here? One, of course, outside in, we've talked about, 
but to build yourself from the inside. I can talk at you, I can give lectures, I can share knowledge, it's all over. You can read things anywhere. The difference is I can give you a PDF on how to ride a bicycle, or I can actually stand by you, show you how to ride a bicycle, and then cheer you on when you finally take the training wheels off. That's the difference between a program of information versus a program of transformation. And most importantly, this program is 100% confidential. A small note of coaching versus therapy. Both are sought by people facing challenges, but therapy and coaching are separate interventions for separate, challenging, uh, for separate challenges. Therapy is for mental health conditions. Coaching is not healthcare. Coaching is a process of self-exploration focused on personal and professional goals growth and performance. I have referenced, uh, it's, it's an interesting article by, oops, by a physician coach who is also a psychiatrist. Dr. Kohli, I was thinking of you when I was, when I was referencing this. It, I found it, it, it's an interesting article. Thank you. So, the people are wondering how you do it. Uh, I know you uh, spoke very eloquently about uh, how from inside out people can transform yeah. and what your approach is. Can you give us some points on how you do it, how you recommend yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to, that's what I said. We'll do a fun exercise next and you will see. Divya, maybe a case or two may be good for us to know what you exactly do or so. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to, yeah, I'll share everything. Um, let's try this exercise. Ready? Yes. Okay. Let's close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths. In and out. Now open your eyes. And look for all the brown things around you. Count them. I'll give you about 10 seconds. All the brown things in front of you. Got it? Now I wish I could see everybody. How many brown things did you see? Type in the chat. One, two. Okay, I think no one. Yeah, people cannot. 15. One. Madhusudan, seven, five, whoa, wow, wow, 13. You guys are surrounded by brown. Okay, five, 10, four, four, Sanjay Mutreja. There Hello. must be a UPS truck outside. <laughs> huh? <laughs> great, 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 great. Okay, now let's do this again. Close your eyes, your deep breaths in and out. Open your eyes and look for all the other colors. Red, yellow, orange, pink, purple, green, white, blue, black, all the other colors. Count them. Okay, now share with me. How many? 32, 17, 10, 15, 22, 18. More colors than I realized there were. 16, 8, 11, 26. You guys are singing in Technicolor here. Okay, amazing. Too many to count. Seven. Okay. Eight, 
So what is this exercise? This is a very simple yet powerful exercise. In life, you will only find what you are looking for. If you are only looking for brown color, you will only see brown color. Even if there are 32 colors in front of you, you will not see them. How many of you were surprised by the number of colors in front of you the second time? Yeah. I see is what the mind knows. Dr. Kaduri, exactly. So what is happening to us? Even if there is a solution or a possibility right under your nose, you're not going to see it. If you walk around looking for brown color all day long, that is all you will see. So from now, as you move forward in life, keep this in mind. When you feel stuck in a situation, when you are looking for answers, Take a deep breath and ask yourself, what am I missing? What am I not seeing? Because chances are that the solution, the possibility, the opportunity is right under your nose. What do you guys think? Is that helpful? Good morning. Yeah, chat is working. Yes. So that is helpful. No? Yes. That is not helpful? Sanjay, Sanjay Raina? Sanjay said it's not. Yeah. It's not helpful? Okay. We'll have to chat. We'll have to chat later. <laughs> I'll have to take him out. <laughs> Sanjay okay. was the one that saw the most colors, but uh... yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would be interested. I, maybe we can chat later. But this is this is one thing that that we all need to keep in mind that when we are stressed, we don't see the solution in front of us. So, what is the real problem? The real problem is that physicians today feel helpless. They feel out of control and unable to change aspects of their life that they want to change. The commonest thing that I find is that physicians are burned out and don't know it. They don't see themselves as being burned out because burnout has become an overused catch all term. It is everywhere, everyone is talking about it and that adds to the confusion. Very importantly, I think that the definition of burnout needs to evolve. The current definition that we have has gaps in it that leave room for interpretation. So how do we feel helpless? Practicing medicine today is not easy. Physicians are under unprecedented stress. I personally am very grateful for the realization that everybody, all organizations, everybody has that we did not make ourselves sick, stressed, or burned out. But what is everyone missing in the picture? Okay. What everybody is missing in the picture is that we are the same human being, whether we are at work or we are at home. If we are exhausted at work, we are going to be exhausted at home. Do we have a charger at our front door that we are going to get plugged in and become an energizer bunny the minute we enter home? No. If we have a negative and cynical attitude due to prolonged stress at work, we are going to be short and snap at our spouse and kids at home. We are going to be negative at home too. There's no magic wand of positivity at home, is there? No. When we have reduced professional efficiency, we're not performing our best at work. We are also not performing our best as spouses, as parents, as community members. 
So saying that burnout is caused by inefficiencies at work, therefore removing these inefficiencies is going to make physicians better, is an extremely simplistic way of looking at things. It does not work. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> so just imagine this with me here. There's this child that is locked up in a wood cabin in the woods, and there's this big bad wolf outside causing stress to this child. And it's been going on for one, two, five years. So what are we being told? And what is being taught by everybody, including us, around us, is let's take the big bad wolf away, put him away, and then we're going to open the door, and this child is going to come out and start playing and be happy and be a child again, and everything will be fine. Does that work? No, it just doesn't. Removing the big, big, big bad wolf is not going to make the child better. That is the first step. You see, all those years of stress causes something to happen inside us. All that stress changes us on the inside, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and energetically. That needs to be addressed in addition to the big bad wolf being taken away. In addition to the outside measures, what changes inside us needs to be addressed. That is the real problem. The outside measures that are being proposed and implemented can be of great benefit, but they are failing miserably because the solutions are not reaching physicians. And why are they not reaching them? Another metaphor. If a plant is sick on the inside, no amount of fertilizer, sunlight, water that you can throw at the plant is going to make the plant healthy again. So the message is, unless and until we support physicians on the inside, absolutely nothing is going to change. How can you know if you are burned out or at risk of being burned out? <clears throat> Whenever you feel helpless, to change something in your health, your career, or your relationships. You are either at risk of being burned out or you are already burned out. When your health has started to slip, you know what you need to do and you still cannot do it. You know where that's going to end up. You may have retired early because you just cannot take it anymore. You did burn out, but you still have a lot more left in you. You have a lot more to give. Maybe you've already had a health setback and you have scaled back and are now living a contracted life full of fear. Maybe you're single and cannot create or find the personal life that you want. In some way or the other, in some area of your life, you have started the slow slide down the hill. It is absolutely heartbreaking for me to see how many young physicians have just given up on trying to create a personal life that works for them. They live for their work, and they don't even realize that they are living contracted lives. So I'm going to conclude with, we are all very high functioning, high achieving people. We wrote the book on work ethic. We wrote the book on time management, accountability, responsibility, motivation, <clears throat> service, being able to connect to a higher purpose. We wrote the book on putting ourselves aside and serving. We don't need more of that. We need something different. We need a complete system, a complete understanding. 
we are not going to be satisfied with anything less. We are a unique combination of head and heart, of critical thinking and logic. We have empathy in both loads. We need a system that teaches us the skills to harness the power of all this. Everything that we bring to the table to do good in our world for the good of our patients, our communities, and our families. Life is full of possibility. It is full of solutions. It is full of color. I will show you how to use every color in front of you in the painting of your life. How to see and use all the possibilities and solutions that are probably right under your nose. Let's do this. Questions? So, uh, okay, uh, there are some questions in the panel. Uh, from the chart box and chart box and uh, Q and A, uh, can you go ahead and uh, Tarek while you yeah, are doing sure, it? Sure. Because I I unlogged out and logged in, so I lost the oh, questions. Okay. And okay. Let me so go anyway, to the chat. So my thinking, yeah. my question to you, Divya, while Tarek is getting ready, it was yeah. a very tantalizing, very uh, kind of inspiring, motivational talk. Uh, but I felt a little bit. Uh, confused probably some of the other participants as well so what is the solution you are suggesting uh, besides being more aware of the burnout and it's all negative impact and uh, and uh, all the outside inside outside in solutions are not going to be effective but what kind of transformational changes we have to make inside out uh, to deal with this unrelenting stress self-imposed to some extent what i have found two things that are helpful to me are gratitude practicing gratitude every moment uh, anytime you feel kind of angry about something just like a wear a sunglasses when you go out immediately everything becomes different when you wear the sunglasses of uh, gratitude every aggravation doesn't seem as bad because all these micro aggravation micro aggressions micro annoyances don't seem as important why waste time on those uh, movements of uh, annoyance so practicing gratitude seems to help to me uh, second thing is uh, uh, self-compassion uh, many members have identified perfectionism and uh, our system expecting perfectionism and our expectation of our perfect perfectionism is a root cause of a lot of our stress. So when you play, play, uh, practice self-compassion, which is not self-pity or self-indulgence or, or uh, selfishness, but self-compassion is the key. And I think many, Christine Neff, I think, wrote the book on Christine uh, self-compassion. And I think that was found to be the one of the most uh, particular ingredient that helps physician burnout for all the interventions people are practicing. So those are my two thoughts, but you, can you expand on those and give some more concrete ideas that we can take home from this talk? Very inspiring, very kind of moving talk, but uh, uh, we want something to practice when you go home and uh, to our Monday morning uh, work situation. Thank you. So what the, the question here, here is that you want me to give you something that works. Right. For a general, I mean, for me, those two work. For, for you, something else might work. And how, what, what works this for is, you? Yeah. This is exactly what I'm talking about. The approach to burnout is a piecemeal approach. And it does not create lasting transformation. We have all these suggestions everywhere. And I would be doing you a disservice by saying, go do this one exercise, this is going to help you. Because this is exactly when I shared my story. I did all those things for years. Right. And I realized that they helped me for a little while, maybe as I was doing them, 
But the solution that I was looking for was a lasting solution that has just simply transformed me from the inside where I am not practicing anything. I am that. I feel that joy. I feel it naturally. It's just coming out of me. It is not something that I need to create artificially anymore. Right. But what and is that? I, yeah. That approach is probably different for different people, right? It is. So, it yeah. is. How that, yeah. What is your so what, transformation? So the, question, yeah. the question here being put to me is for me to tell you how everything works in a few minutes yeah. or, or, to, or to suggest one exercise. So the one exercise that we did, maybe in addition to that, the other exercise that we can do is to just simply practice stopping at the end of your day or in the middle of your day, maybe for five minutes, taking a few deep breaths and to just stop what you are doing maybe every every two, three hours to just sit down and connect to yourself, mm -hmm. to allow yourself to feel what you are feeling, to just let yourself be, to sit with yourself. This is a skill that we have lost. This is not something, I mean, there is one thing where we are telling ourselves that we need to be grateful or we need to have compassion or we need to do this. But there is another thing to just sit down and do it. So what I would suggest, maybe if it's too much during the day, at the end of your day, mm -hmm. just sit with yourself for five minutes and allow yourself to be. Don't yeah. change anything. I think Ravi, what she's trying to say is that there's not one way and then there are three or four paths and they all merge together at the end. Right. And rather yeah. than just focusing on one, you should do it. Uh, several things because burnout is a big issue it's not a small thing it's like yes. a, a yeah, I remember Sarathi, yeah you always mentioned in your talk well, i think transitioning I, I think before coming to home transition from your work yes we talked about that uh, uh, that kind of thing simple see, just things. the just the very basic thing the first thing that i teach people is how to sleep is how to feel rested how yeah. to sleep better how to feel rested even when you are on call. Just, just that, how, how would that affect your life? If you could just know that you are going to feel rested every single day of your life, no matter what is going on. Just feeling rested gives you peace of mind, gives you clarity, and then looking at your stress triggers. Okay, let's go to question, Ravi. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, so there are a few questions. I'm gonna combine some of those things. Um, and people have commented about that. Um, so one of the question um, is that um, by internal, uh, internal medicine doctor that uh, has moved out of hospital, has moved to the outpatient, the practice is doing well, but he, the mm -hmm. rate that he's going too fast, uh, the person is afraid that uh, they'll be burned out. Um, and they're worried that uh, this will happen within next 10 years or so. Um, and I think the solutions you already gave, uh, Divya, which is taking care of yourself, sleep, um, taking care of your family while you're doing that, know your limits. I think we didn't talk about that much is also important. What you can do and what you cannot do and when to say no is also important. Uh, so anything on that, uh, Divya? So I really love that you're asking the question and this is where I hope to catch people to search for the breakthrough before the breakdown. So if you can already see that you are going down that path, reach out and start doing things. You can, you can start practicing, looking for things like I did for 15 years, kept looking for answers, finally found something which is lasting, creates a lasting peace inside me. I, I was able to just shift something inside me, finally. I think that is there's a lot of people <clears throat> sharing in the chat, Heart, uh, heartfulness, mindfulness, meditation, walks, write a diary, um, journaling, knowing one's limits, meditation, self-reflection, kindness, gratitude, everything. Everything helps and everything works. I'm not shooting down anything. What I am saying and what I'm offering <clears throat> is a system at the end of this 
that allows you to put everything together. What I find most often is that when people are doing these practices, they, they calm down within themselves, but the change that is happening on the outside is very slow or may not happen at all. That is what I think is a contracted life, where you tell yourself, this is what life is. I have to have self-compassion. I'll either scale back. I will uh, know my limitations. I will uh, not respond with anger to situations. I will, I will uh, stay away from confrontations. All that leads to a contracted life. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about transforming yourself on the inside so that you are able to change everything on the outside. You are able to lead the life of your dreams. You're able to give back. You are able to live your life at your potential. And that's a process. All of these things together can take you there. It may take much longer. It may take years. Some people never get there. Am I making sense? Is this, should I Maybe, let's, let's say this in another answer, way? Because we have so many yeah. questions. Can we move yeah. a little bit? Yes. OK. I think somebody is asking about healthcare cost, which I think you outlined. Um, yeah. And so it's like a, almost a billion dollar to the health industry nowadays. Uh, I will, you can go to the AMA forward, uh, step forward, uh, which has a, amazing resources on, um, on yeah. the website, AMA step forward, and has some uh, calculations too for organization of 500 or so, it will cost you a million, probably your 10, 8% of physicians turnover will happen. And a lot of data is there, so you can look at that. One million, um, one million per physician. One million per physician, yes, yes. And then a couple of people mentioned about they uh, or their spouse changed to yoga and they're, they're doing better. Um, and I, one person actually even left the practice has been teaching yoga to others. See, so this is what I'm talking about is leaving your practice, retiring. Of course, if that's a choice and that's, that's where you're at, that's wonderful. But if you are retiring because of burnout, you still have more to give. How are you going to do that? Yes. The next question is, how long is your course and how much does it cost in case if you want to feel comfortable answering? If you don't, that's okay too. I'm, I'm, so Dr. Vinay Dilal is also saying, still not clear what your approach is. Um, I'm trying to be as clear as I can. I'm going to help you sleep. I'm going to help you uh, manage your stress and your relationships. And each physician has their own unique stressors, unique things that are going on in their life. Uh, and I'm going to help you change that in your life. As far as, uh, what was the question, Dr. Tariq? Yeah, Cost. how long? The, how the long is the course number. and the cost and how much time commitment they need this to be asking? The course is eight weeks long. The, uh, you will need to give about 15 minutes a day. Uh, there are modules that you will listen to for one, one and a half hours a week, maximum two, and you will do 15 minutes of practice every day. The course is for eight weeks, and then you will have the opportunity to stay connected for some time if you want to. As far as the price of the program, what is the cost of all this? What is the price? I think it's priceless. So connect with me. We can talk about it. We can talk about Okay. Um, we can talk about what works for you and we can talk about the cost. Um, somebody asked about the imposter syndrome. Uh, you want to address yes. that? Uh, imposter syndrome is huge. It's a huge cause of burnout. It, it stops us. It blocks us. There is something that is going on inside of us that, that then creates, okay, let, let me put it this way. So this is what I realized from, from everything that I went, everywhere that I went, this is what I realized, that our life begins from us. It is flowing from inside of us. So no matter what is going on on the outside is a reflection of what is going on inside of us. So if we are, if we are feeling like we are an imposter, 
there is something that is going on inside of us. And no matter what, we are going to create situations at work where we are bypassed, where we are marginalized, where we are going to not make the progress and the growth and the professional fulfillment that we want. So the, to address imposter syndrome, we have to look inside. We have to change and shift something inside of us. And if we change who we are on the inside, then our life on the outside changes effortless. The solutions pop up, the right kind of people come into our lives. See, the reason I created this program is I did not find anything. I, I was looking for years. I did not find anything out there. I did not find anything that helped me. Nothing was a lasting solution. So I went about creating something that probably doesn't exist yet. And I will become, I mean, for the last two years, I have been working with people. Uh, I, I, I think you guys have shared my website. There are uh, case studies on there. I am going to start putting videos of the people I've worked with, um, physicians I've worked with, and you guys can see for yourself. And as I move forward, I think it will become clearer and it will become more defined. Okay, Srini, how much time we have? I think we can continue for another five, five, 10 minutes. I think 11, 15, probably 10 minutes to we'll stop. Okay, so there was another kind of a comment here about uh, is burnout coming from our greediness? No. No, it's not coming from your greediness. Your greediness is coming from things that you feel inside of you. Your greediness is coming from some subconscious programming, from some stuff, maybe me being uh, swept up with what is going on around you. Your greediness is coming from a feeling of scarcity that is inside you where you have lost touch with yourself. You have lost touch with the truth and the power of who you are. So you want to collect things on the outside and you think that they are going to make you feel better. So no, it is not coming from the greediness. So another question from uh, uh... Dr. Sri Nagesh uh, is a board member about uh, staff hiring for a small practice and solo practice. And uh, it causes another trouble for the physicians uh, and also is another reason why we are having a hard time helping patients while we are managing our offices. Yes, staff, hiring staff is a very big problem. But I think if you, if you can be calm and clear-headed, if you can be rested, you are going to make the right decisions and hiring the right kind of people. And then you are going to be a true leader of your office, of your life, of your patients. And you're going to be able to affect the direction in your office, in your staff, where you're going. You're going to choose the right people and then you're going to lead them the right way. I mean, that, that, that becomes a non-issue. Mm -hmm. Once you are rested and calm, you're headed, connected. Um, and some of the people are talking about how they have been finding help through the meditations, uh, gratitude, writing um, the journal, three gratitude uh, things that happened to you, um, thanking other people, etc. Which again, I think part of the thing is the self-reflection and yes. being so mindful. There are, there are there are three parts to this um, journey of self-realization. The first is awareness, like you have to know that there is a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then is the realization where you study the problem, you find out what, what is causing it, then you start making the changes. And the third step is self-actualization. I think this is where, this is where we stop. We stop at the self-realization. But the self-actualization is the third step when you become all of who you are meant to be, you are able to do everything that you came here to do. You are not leading a contracted life. So self-awareness, self-realization, and self-actualization. Those are the three steps that I'm talking about. And those are the three steps within you that I will guide you into doing.
I think Ravi is gone, but somebody's asking, is there a burnout committee? Um, and I I'm think here. Yeah, I, there. yeah, I'm here, but yeah, I did think about it in the beginning and I was planning to yes, we talked started about by it, you. <laughs> but we both but, uh, were so busy yeah, in our life and it's we hard got, to do uh, extra up with uh, so many things. But maybe the last two months of my term, I'll start it <laughs> so that it goes forward. <laughs> well, next year, when you come back, when you're less to do. You can, yeah, we can yeah. start with you and me and Tarek and some yes. Divya and other group of people who are like-minded yeah. can do a, something like this. Absolutely. I mean, there are great suggestions in the chat box. Please look at it. I cannot address everybody. It's just amazing how interaction has gone. This is one of the most interactive things I've seen. Um, I think some of us are clearly feeling frustrated. Some of the comments are there. And um, we feel like we are left on our own to find a solution. Our institutions are letting us down. Maybe the lifestyle we have created is too much for us to handle. Maybe it's internal. Somebody asked me, what is my three things? I would always say it's my happiness equation, which is um, look out for your past because that will come with you. Past is never a past, it walks with you. Your past uh, anger, your demons, your failures that you carry, the self-esteem, the present. I want to, I want, I want to talk to that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Putting your past behind, putting that big burden that is on your shoulders down is one of the first steps. And I will absolutely show you how to do that. That, that, that I'm really glad yes. that, that you mentioned that. That is a, one of the most important things yeah. we can do to feel. So my equation can... is based on a Seligman's, which is uh, uh, Martin perfect, Seligman. perfect past, perfect present, which is the mindfulness that Ravi talks about, the gratitude, enjoying what you're doing. Because gratitude teaches you mindfulness eventually. It falls into yes. that. Yes, yes. And yes. then perfect uh, future, which you cannot create, but at least create the optimistic and hopeful attitude and make yourself strong from other two areas then go from there and then expectations and control are the other two things that will knock you out that goes on um, my past See, as uh, i yeah, yeah as i hear the all these things past that you look for but then expectation yeah. and control also carries with you and that will as, cause you trouble. as i hear all these things expectation control all these things there is an effort in here there is an effort that is constantly being required of us to say, okay, now we have to do gratitude. Now we have to stop mm -hmm. controlling. Now we have to, now we have to pay yes. for our past. Now we have to do this. There's an effort. What I am talking about is reaching a point where you are effortlessly, effortlessly joyful, where you're not thinking about these things anymore. You're not thinking about the past anymore. So it's, it's like, a, yeah. it's like Divya, playing a piano you, when you were young versus playing piano at a major concert where you are perfected this with so much practice. And I yeah. think the, part of the problem is also that people don't practice these things. People think that doing meditation and yoga one time will teach them or maybe short time will teach them, but it's it takes a lot of time and efforts and continuous improving yourself. And even See, being, I think, and yeah, asking others I, for, for help is also important. I think meditation is not for everybody. People no, don't meditate. No, I agree. I agree. People don't meditate because they cannot meditate. Yeah. There are many people that cannot meditate. So, so different things work for different people. And in my program, I, I even talk to people about why you're not able to meditate. And if you're not able to meditate, that, that there would be, that, that there, we can look for other things. Divya, can you the, stop, I'm reading uh, the comments here. The presentation yeah. were more substantive. Well, Divya, can you stop sharing your screen so we can other? Uh, I yes. have something to show also, not yes. uh, related to this topic, but in general <laughs> topic. Thank you, thank you. So keep going. Uh, um, we have a few minutes. Yeah. Let me. Shall we go ahead and uh, conclude it? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think, I think the only point has been Ravi. Yeah. So. Huh? Yeah, let's, let's finish uh, in yeah. the next few minutes. Uh, thank you, Divya, for a wonderful presentation. I think Tarak is doing a wonderful job. As a cardiologist, I think uh, I learned a lot. I think awareness seems to be a problem. I think once we are aware of what is going on, I think from my point of view, I try to control what I can control. Some things are not in our hands. So I leave it to the... You know, the uncontrollable, unavoidable things I can't control it. So I just leave it alone. I think getting a better with my experiences. But I think there's no good one good answer. Like I think Divya said, 
I think everybody has to try their own way of doing things. But I think uh, at least you gave us some guidelines to just work through and work through our social kind of a networking. Um, uh, thank you, everybody. I think a lot of questions about how to get the CME. So I think we're going to send an email about the contact information to the email events for all the CMEs, what you have not gotten so far, if you have not gotten it. So please use that email and phone number. Uh, Api will send an email in the next, uh, like probably next day or so, so that you can call uh, the person to get your uh, the CME, what you have not gotten. For this particular CME, you'll get an evaluation form. Once you fill out the evaluation form, then you will get the CME and then you can download by yourself. Okay, thank you. Ravi, please take over. Yeah, uh, thank you, Divya. Again, it's a pleasure thank to you. connect with you. Thank you. And thank we you connected. for the opportunity. My pleasure, Divya, again. And uh, like your name suggests, you are at <laughs> Divya. <laughs> Bring light and uh, shine to everybody's life. And uh, we met a few years back with the COVID time. And ever since, we continued our uh, partnership yeah. and friendships and uh, through our meetings and uh, seminars. And thank you for your support. You are not only generous with your word, but with your deeds as well. And uh, you've always been there for us. We really appreciate uh, people like you helping us, you know, and that makes And I appreciate all of you, everything that you do. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, yeah. I, I got involved with RP for the first time during COVID and I've just seen everything that you guys do, initiatives here in India for the members. It's, it's just amazing. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, and thank you everybody, for for for. Uh, yeah, we have a large and, number of participants. One forty nine. And participating. Thank you. I, like I said, I'm going to. I have saved the chat, and I am going to read all the all the comments. Thank you. So here is uh, what we normally present to our speakers, Divya, Dr. Divya Navani, uh, for your outstanding contribution in can the field of Can you click on it? Can you click on it? Yeah, is it not showing? I think it's just showing as a little piece. Just click on it. It's not open yet. Yeah, it's can, not, you, no. can you see it? No? Nope. Okay, just let me try. It. It. I think it's not open. Okay, let me try again. Can you see it? Not, oh yeah, now you can see, yes. Okay. Uh, Dr. Divya Navani, for your outstanding contribution in the field of burnout in healthcare, and welcome you, our RP Distinguished Speakers Club signed by our CME chair, Dr. Srini Gangasani and myself on May 20th, 2023. Uh, thank you. And let me put a plug in for our convention. And we have an amazing uh, CME speakers and topics uh, getting ready for our convention in Philadelphia, July 6 to 9. Divya is a sponsor for our convention. Thank you, Divya. And uh, we have excellent topic, including lifestyle medicine, burnout, cardiology, oncology, gastroenterology. Uh, all elite panel of uh, Ivy League and uh, uh, esteemed members are joining us. Please, uh, it is going to be one of the best CME programs as well. And we have, this is the packages we still have, want you to be uh, sign up for. And uh, it, it is the individual package of $699 and it will go up to $749 in June. And young physicians, we want to invite them all to come because uh, the future belongs to you, so we want you to be there in big number. And this year, especially for the medical student, we lowered the price even further to 249 and uh, the packages are there. So please join, and uh, in big numbers, we already have a large number of people signed up, but we want to make it even bigger. And we have some entertainment, as usual. And uh, today, actually, I'm in Philadelphia, uh, working out some logistics uh, things, and. Uh, uh, visiting some vendors to make sure that we get the best experience for all of you. So please be there and uh, make it a grand success. And thank you again, Divya, for your really wonderful contribution and your friendship as well. And uh, we'll meet again in Philadelphia. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. We'll